So why Delhi? Uh, it is a very valid question because Delhi, after all, is a city which is facing enormous problems from pollution to overpopulation, water and power shortages, and security issues. So I'm here today to uh, discuss why I made this unlikely choice. Frankly, I didn't think of Delhi. Uh, it wasn't my first choice. When I heard about this competition, these were the three cities that came to mind. Copenhagen, Curitiba, and Chicago. I thought Chicago, with access to 20% of the world's fresh water, has to be the most resilient city. But with further research, I realized that res resilience is so much more than just being rich in resources. It's about uh, absorbing shocks, uh, coping with difficulties uh, quickly, and uh, reorganizing while undergoing changes. And these were three qualities. Um, cope, adapt, and transform, which I, I, I identify with Delhi. I have lived in Delhi all my life. I have uh, uh, experienced these things firsthand, and I thought that I can bring this unique perspective of an insider to this competition, and that is why I chose Delhi. So let's see how Delhi copes, adapts, and transforms. Anything and everything that you can think of that can go wrong with the city is going wrong with Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows the capacity to deal with all these difficult situations and survive on a daily basis. People cope. They are used to living with very less. I've compared the figures with New York to give you an idea on, um, of the water and power usage and how small it is in Delhi. Uh, an, an average person in Delhi uses one-sixth of the water, one-tenth of the electricity. They live in smaller houses, have bigger families, and there are only 36 cars per thousand people as compared to 210 in New York. All this adds up to the fact that uh, the emissions in Delhi are already very low at 1.5 tons per uh, CO2 per capita as compared to 10.5 in New York. This capacity to cope results from the fact that Delhi is a city of refugees. People from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Tibet, Burma have settled here. And um, the immigration continues with almost a quarter of a million people coming to the city every year. This makes for a mix of people who can naturally adapt to new situations and challenges, and they bring this spirit to the city. <laughs> <laughs> so how does the city adapt? Uh, when such a large number of mostly poor people come to the city, they urgently need work. And the city has organized itself to accommodate them and this uh, need. These are the three areas that I want to focus on, and they, and they show how how the city does it. One is local food. Uh, as a mega city of 17 million people, there are huge development pressures on land. Despite this, uh, almost half of the land area around Delhi's boundary is still used to cultivate crops and vegetables. It might seem remarkable, but there are uh, huge incentives for this. One is uh, the wholesale fresh produce market in Delhi, which is one of the largest in, in Asia. Second is being the national capital. It has good road and rail connectivity, which allows farmers to bring in their produce. Uh, in the absence of cold storage, it's very important to get it, get it done quickly. Third is that um, this sector uses the skills of immigrants who come in from rural areas to the city. The second key area where immigrants find work is low carbon transport. Uh, low, car uh, low infrastructure vehicles like rickshaws, carts, and wheelbarrows, which uh, run on human power, and can be adapted easily to suit a variety of different functions like logistics or transport. Third is waste management. Delhi collects uh, almost 90% of its waste, a figure which is made possible only by the um, uh, contribution of the unorganized sector. People like waste collectors and waste um, sorters who um, make a living out of managing and recycling waste. All three of these systems have evolved over time gradually to fulfill certain needs that the city has and to make use of existing systems and also provide jobs to the poor. 
In 1996, Delhi was ranked as the fourth most polluted city in the world and was seen as a huge wake-up call by the city. Since then, there have been a lot of efforts by the Delhi government and various NGOs to spread awareness and educate people about environmental issues and climate change. Uh, we see a lot of campaigns like saving water, um, using public transport, encouraging people to use public transport, and these are broadcast on TV and radio, uh, uh, published in uh, daily newspapers and seen across billboards in Delhi. With growing uh, e economic, uh, with economic growth in recent years, there have been several initiatives uh, to transform the city by strengthening its existing systems. The most important of these is the Delhi Metro. So all three of, all three of these have uh, been uh, introduced after 1996. The most important is Delhi Metro, which is a hugely popular project. It sees almost two million daily commuters and uh, was recently certified as the only uh, metro in the world to earn carbon credits because it, because it reduces pol pollution in the city. Second is the conversion of all commercial vehicles to CNG, which is a clean fuel. It doesn't cause pollution. Uh, and more, most importantly, uh, Delhi has the largest fleet of uh, CNG buses in the world. This is important because buses, is the most, buses are the most popular mode of uh, public transport, with 60% of the commuters using them. The third is an, uh, an sorry. The third is, an, uh, is a campaign to increase the tree cover in the city. When it started, there were just 26 square kilometer of tree cover at 1.7% of the city area, uh, which, is, which has been increased to 20% of the city area at 300 square kilometers. And the campaign is still ongoing. Last year, the Delhi government planted 1 million trees in partnership with all the schools in the city. I would like to wrap up by saying that Delhi is by no means the most resilient city in the world, but it has certain characteristics that makes it resilient at different levels, and the opportunity lies in understanding these qualities and to leverage them in order to make it resilient to future changes like climate change. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to uh, finish and encourage you to enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, I would like to challenge you to speak to at least three new people that you haven't met yet. Uh, there's a lot of bright minds in the room and we've seen from some of the presentations there's a lot of new ideas that I think uh, we, haven't, we haven't come across before or uh, offer them from a different perspective. So uh, enjoy your evening, help yourself to food and to drink and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy meeting new people. Thank you very much.